What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite dating coach, Elliot Scott, and this is the Elliot Scott podcast. I should have some music in the in the beginning, like they always do. So I, I don't have any, so I'll sing a do 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 do. I don't know. We gotta have some music in the beginning. But um, as you can see by the title of the podcast, we are going to talk about how men become low ego piece of shits uh, or piece of shit men that you all you know refer us to in the comments. So. This could be a very long and lengthy discussion because I think there are a lot of reasons and ways a man can become that sort of man. At the same time, I am a big believer that a lot of the times the man's not even that bad of a guy. Women just, just you know how guys throw the, the, the term that his, his ex is crazy. For example, all guys say, that. oh, my ex is fucking nuts. My ex is crazy. Well, I think women do the same thing with men. A lot of the times, just because he doesn't like you or just because you thought you guys were having a, a good time and it was moving towards a relationship and then it doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad guy. If he's emotionally unavailable, it doesn't mean he's a bad guy. There's a reason he's emotionally unavailable. However, if he does lead you on, screw you over, manipulate you, use you, um, and all those good, wonderful, beautiful, you know, horrible things, actually, then it's not good. So, so let's talk about how a guy actually gets there. In my opinion, in my professional but not licensed <laughs> opinion, if you mat, if it matters. So I'm a big believer that everyone is trying to fill a void. As humans, especially in Western culture, we strive on status perfectionism, completion, progression, uh, moving forward, escalation, whatever. We we are obsessed with it. And we feel that we cannot do everything on our own and or if we do or we are doing something or we're going along with our plan, we need to see results for our actions. <clears throat> Goddamn throat. We need to see results for our actions, okay? And one of those ways that men like to get results is through the satisfaction of, uh, you know, getting a woman, obtaining a woman. And I think that's very important to us because as the species of, you know, the sex of a male, we strive, our, our self-worth is so wrapped up on what women think of us that every single thing we do ladies everything everything we do besides maybe like our mission which i know you a lot of you out there like this guy works at a burger joint he has no mission like come on now you know if you should be going for a guy who works at a burger joint by the way but i know a lot of women who are just talking to probably like who i would say is and this is gonna sound harsh average men right now i'm not saying that's a bad thing i'm not saying it's bad if you work at a burger joint what i'm just trying to argue is that a lot of men don't act their routine they don't act as if they have a mission and w w everything we do is based on if a woman likes us or not okay or trying to get a woman to like us and i feel that we will do whatever it takes to get that woman and sometimes there's men who are capable of getting a woman absolutely no problem but then there are men who are not and they're starts to create a vicious cycle you know it's not only it's, the man doesn't think okay i can't get her let me let me go over and use some manipulating tactics what happens is a man starts off i think with good nature and good promise saying i want to get this girl and i want to court her and i want to treat her well but then things happen uh usually it's insecurities uh, she, you know, women constantly turn him down. Maybe he wasn't born into a loving family. His parents are divorced. His parents didn't raise him with love. Like I said, uh, maybe he's ha he, he doesn't have a lot of options. And when he does have options, you know, when he has sex with these women, these women uh, beat him down verbally with it. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons why men are the way they are. And... What happens, I believe, is over time, these men become insecure, and they it's, it's almost like a form of insanity. 
they become insecure. Just like a lot of women will come to me and they would have these problems where, you know, they, they always tell me, I can't help but be needy or I can't help but be this way or I can't help but be that. And I would say that comes from a place of insecurity. You know, that might be the woman's version of it. And for a lot of men, you know, they have to fill this void. They're like, okay, well, I can't, I'm, I'm insecure, I'm a piece of shit, I'm, I'm supposedly not good in bed, I, I've been heartbroken, I've been cheated on. I, and I'm not saying it's the woman's fault. It's not the woman's fault. A man needs to take account for his actions, right? He needs to take responsibility for his actions. I'm not saying it's the woman's fault. I'm just saying that there are ways these, these gaps are created. And it depends on how a man handles it that, you know, uh, dictates how he becomes. I, I like to use the analogy of the broken arm. You know, you could break your arm and you can go to a doctor, get an x-ray, have a professional put it in a cast in the right position and it heals correctly, you know, in the right time. Or you could be the person who says, no, F that, I don't want to do it that way. I'm just going to hold my arm in this position, read some stuff online on how to do it, and hopefully it heals. And it does heal, but it doesn't heal correctly. You know, and that's where these men... And sadly, a lot of the time, I truly believe that men don't know. They do know what they're doing in terms of like what they want with their intentions of you. But they, it's, it's different in the fact that sometimes they don't know that they have a problem. And that's where this, like a narcissist, for example, like, you know, there's some narcissists out there who do not know they have that problem. Or there's men who are treating women this way and they feel like, it's okay. It's not a problem. And that's where this vicious cycle begins. You know, so there'll be times where <clears throat> the guy would be cheated on, heartbroken, just got out of a relationship, not really looking for... Actually, let me go back. There's so many variables to, to even touch on. Because it's not even... It doesn't even matter so much if he's a piece of shit or not. What about the variables? Like him just getting out of a relationship and you two talking and he wants or he doesn't want a relationship and you do you know and and then he says well too bad and then the woman sticks around and you guys continue to talk like why do you stick around if the guy doesn't want a relationship a lot of women just can't let the guy go but you know that doesn't mean the guy's obligated to have a relationship with you so what's going to happen? He's going to take advantage of the situation. I wouldn't even say he's taking advantage because right now it's not his fault anymore. I, I'm a big believer that we can't change that the guy's an asshole. We establish that. Okay. What the woman does with that information is is on her. If you realize the guy's kind of an asshole or he, he stood you up or flaked or did this or did that and you continue to talk to him because you desire him so much that you fear losing him and he takes advantage of that situation that's you can't get mad at him you just can't you can say well he should take advantage of it well it's like get that it's like come on devil's in the opportunity get that shit out of here you shouldn't even stuck around in the first place but you did it you did anyway you know so and then and then that's i always say that's where the cycle happens that's why i don't really blame men on it i think it's 50 50 the man's an asshole. The man treats you like shit. Drop him. All women should do that. A man is going to learn his lesson very fast. But there are women out in the world who do not drop the guy, and that's where he thinks, "Aha! This is where I can. This is you know, this works." And so he keeps on doing it, rinse and repeat. It's, it's classical conditioning, you know. So I tell women, you got to drop the guy. But a lot of women can't. A lot of women don't and won't. And then the guy's going to stick around, and this is going to happen. And then she calls me. It pays a you know a good sum for it, and then realizes okay well why is he doing what he's doing, and then I have to break it down and sometimes break their heart <laughs> you know and it and it sucks but it, it, I mean it is what it is this is what happens, uh, so there's so many variables I would say that on why a guy is the way he is it's not just how he's raised or the heartbreak or the been cheated on and things like that it's also the situation. You know, if the guy doesn't, listen, if a guy doesn't want a relationship and the woman sticks around with that guy, that's a problem because, uh, I, and I say this a lot in my videos, a relationship is a lifestyle, right? A rela I mean, that's only having sex with one woman, uh, having your weekends or weekdays accounted for or a certain amount of them. You know, I have to see you on the weekends, for example, or a, a couple of days of the week. They're accounted for. That that's sacrifices. You have to make sacrifices when you're in a relationship. Some men just aren't ready for that. 
you, you can, like I said, you can only have sex with one woman. You have to answer to somebody. You have to have, I mean, you get know what I'm saying? You, 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 there's just not a lot of benefits in that guy's mind for a relationship. And if the woman's sticking around for this guy because she desires him so much that she fears losing him, well, now the guy realizes I can have my cake and eat it too. The guy realizes, well, sh I told her I didn't want a relationship and she's still sticking around. So why? And I say this in all my videos. So why would I date her? And you can't get mad at the guy for that. Because the guy, maybe the guy does like you. Maybe the guy, you know, is interested in you. And that does not mean he has committed or he has commitment issues. A lot of women think just because the guy doesn't want to commit that he has commitment issues. That's not true. And maybe you're, hey, maybe he likes you, you're, but just not enough to have a relationship. And then women say, well, he should let him go. Well, maybe you should let him go. Why don't you? You know, same reason he doesn't let you go, because he likes you. He likes talking to you. He thinks you're a cool chick. Just not enough for a relationship. Just, just not enough for him to think, okay, well, you're so cool. You're so awesome that even though you're a, an eight, I'd rather have three sevens, right? That's just, that's just how a lot of guys think. Unless a woman's able to fulfill his needs and desires, and not saying you, well, you do have to, actually, a lot of, I don't want all the feminazis and, se you know, people to call me sexist, but as, uh, that has nothing to do with gender uh, or sex, that has, that's just relationship, you have to fill each, each other's needs, he has to do the same for you, a man needs to make you feel wanted, a man needs to make you feel loved, a man needs to invest in a woman, a man needs to, uh, provide his resources. A man needs to court you. A man needs to prove himself to a woman. I agree with that 100%. Absolutely, a man needs to prove himself and make himself worthy to a woman. But a lot of the times, a man or women take a guy in anyway, despite all that. I know so many women where a guy is a piece of shit and the woman sticks around. And I'm asking myself, well, why is that? I, now, I know why that is. You know, it could be a form of insecurity or, or uh, or validation or again filling a void or she feels like she doesn't want to waste the year she spent with the guy or trying to get the guy and and uh, and all that goes she thinks she's in love with the guy and I mean things like that I mean there's a lot of reasons why she does it but at the same end you know a woman needs to prove herself to a man too that's a relationship you have to it's, it's a negotiation it, I hate when women think, oh, he needs to do all the work and he needs to do all the chasing, you know, because I'm the woman. It's like, whatever, like, what does that even mean? What is that? I mean, like, yeah, you're a woman. So, so, so are billions of others. Like, you're, you're, and I hate, this is where I get in so much trouble. And I don't know why I'm going to say it, but you're, no offense, ladies. You're, you're unique. You're beautiful. You're awesome. But I am a realist when it comes to these discussions. But what makes you so special out of all these other women? Because I guarantee no matter what you say, a woman can, is going to make an argument for her case. But what makes you so special that he is willing to give up all other women and date you for the rest of his one, one, uh, one life? The rest of his one life. What makes you so special for him to do that? And vice versa. You need to ask him the same thing. Now, of course, I don't mean that's rhetorical. I'm not saying that you have to be so amazing. I'm just saying there has to. There's a lot of variables. Not only do you have to be a wonderful, you know, uh, woman, and and have that chemistry and depth, but you have to have a connection. And I think that's where it, where it makes a difference. It's the connection. Because listen, you could talk to a lot of men, or men could talk to a lot of women, and see potential in a lot of women but when it but you cannot have that same connection with everybody that takes time even skill i would argue that takes depth that takes commitment that takes sacrifice and if you can get someone to do those things that's where you stick out you know I, and, and here's the good news i guess I, I i would argue uh or i would say or i would agree with a lot of women are very discouraged with a lot of the things I have to say. I'm about to sneeze. Hold on. Wait, hold on. <coughs> a lot of women are very discouraged with a lot of the things I have to say in my in my uh, podcast. But in reality... <coughs> God damn. What a great podcast. But in reality, 
once you get a guy hooked or once you have those things that I just mentioned, the guy isn't going anywhere. Because I remember back when I was 19 or 20, I was trying to get over this girl. And all my friends would say, there's better out there. There's better. And statistically, there is. There's better out there. There's better out there. There's better. It's like, I know that, but I don't want better. I want her. My my focus was her, and when you have that focus on somebody, you don't want anyone else's validation. You don't want anyone else's approval. You don't want anyone else's love. You don't want anyone else's uh, affection. You want that person. You know what's that saying? Uh, to love a per or it's not about finding the perfect person. It's about loving the imperfect person perfectly, or something like that. And that's the truth. I remember trying to get over her. I was thinking of all her flaws, you know, that tactic you hear. Well, think about all the reasons why you don't like them or all the things you, you know, you're glad you're missing out on or all her flaws. And I'm like, okay, well, let me think about her flaws. And I thought about them, but that just made her more human, right? Because everyone has flaws and the brain knows that I have flaws. Like what makes me so perfect? Like why am I pointing out her flaws? I'm, I'm, I'm not even close to perfect. I'm so effed up. It's not even funny. So ladies, when, when it comes to finding the right guy, Going all the way back to what I originally said, you need to find a man who invests in you. Yes, you got to prove yourself too, because I do believe it's a negotiation. But in the beginning, the man should prove himself. The man should court you. The man should win you over. And you should not be so eager to jump in his arms. Make the man work. That is the dating and courting process. Even from an evolutionary standpoint, that's the dating or that's the mating ritual. That's what is supposed to happen. You know, and when that happens, Make sure you invest in each other, and if you want to keep a guy around, you have to get a guy who, because again, it's very hard to compete along the line of all these women. Competition is just so rampant nowadays, especially with technology. I could talk to someone from China if I wanted to, right, because of the, I just can. It's that easy. So to get on that connection with a guy and to get a guy to commit – you have to have that depth. You have to have that chemistry. That rep- And that's hard to find because it's like, well, okay, I hear you, Elliot, but how do I keep a guy around for that long? That's a whole other you know, just discussion we can talk to but or talk about in another podcast episode. But, I mean, that's, that's usually what happens. It's very hard to find that guy. It's very hard to keep that guy. And it's very... It's just so it's just so hard nowadays because everyone in the world's trying to make it. Everyone in the world's putting in their two cents is struggling to find somebody. But as you know, as and, and the sad thing is, as much as you want, you know, as a woman, as much as you want that guy, there's another woman out there who wants a guy, you know, just as bad. And so everyone, everyone's just fighting for scraps nowadays because there's so much competition. I mean, that's just what it is. And in my opinion, that favors the man slightly because uh, men are more about quantity than the actual depth. Unless, like, I don't want you to get discouraged, unless the right person comes along and he's like, okay, I'm going to invest in this woman. So, you know. So going back to the discussion on this low ego man, I'm a big believer that there are a good amount of people out there, men, who are trying to fill a void. And who would, are hurt and damaged and will find many ways to do so, even if that means sacrificing the happiness of, uh, you know, a woman or the person he's talking to. But at the same time, I I argue that just because you're not happy, or he doesn't want to date you, doesn't automatically mean going back to what I was saying doesn't automatically mean he has commitment issues, or doesn't automatically mean that he's a fuck boy or a piece of shit because it doesn't i know a lot of guys who like you but just don't want a relationship with you and again i'm i'm, I'm beating a dead horse now i know a lot of women would say well then why doesn't he drop him drop you it's not his job to drop you you're the one who comes around you're the one who's not getting what he, he's getting what he wants and i don't mean that sexually i just mean that as hey i like you i think you're fun i think you're cool i think you're awesome you're a great chick you're great to be around you know, but I just don't want a relationship. If, you know, no offense. And he's telling you that. And there's a lot of women who 
still stick around after that, hoping the guy will change. I had two clients yesterday who were saying that, and I said, you need to let go of that hope, and you need to understand that this guy is not going to change. Now, knowing that, you can continue what you want with him, but don't have that expectation, because you guys do have a great thing, because this guy actually did treat this girl pretty well, really well. He just did not want a relationship. That's a lifestyle choice, okay? Uh, and she stuck around in, in hopes that, that he, he would change his mind. I said, you need to cut that shit out, because that's not fair to you. If you're going to stick around, you you need to know the, the, the circumstance. You need to see it for what it is. Um, and then, you know, she came around and understood what I was saying. But a lot of women can't do that. And, of course, I'm not saying that's, I'm not saying that that's, the, that's how all the situations are. Again, there are men out there who are making you some big-ass promises. But, again, I would argue, though, again, not saying there's not, piece of shit men out there but i would argue that maybe he if he first off he made all those promises in the beginning don't hold that against him that's just people in the that's just how people are they're emotional they're in the moment that's how men are especially they're you know they're always going to show interest in the beginning no matter what what he wants with you that's just the mating ritual he's going to say things but maybe, because this happened to me several times in my life, where I actually did mean those things in the beginning. I was like, hey, you're a cool chick. I think you're awesome. I love being around you. I love this and that and that, whatever. But over time, it started to die off. I got to know her better, and I realized, okay, you know, maybe the relationship ran its course. And what a lot of women don't want to accept is that, you know, she that is that the fact that even though she likes the guy, there are some relationships out there that run their course and, you know, in a matter of months, two months, three months. There, sometimes it just dies off that fast because even though the chemistry was there in the beginning and you liked each other, it just doesn't last. I mean, I'm telling you, it is a it is a beautiful concoction to have a wonderful relationship that lasts long term. It has to be the right amount of sexual energy, sexual tension, the right amount of communication i think that's a big one communication is really important it has to be two healthy mindset people people who are really good at understanding each other and looking at you know being empathetic seeing where the other person's coming from you know not not holding grudges being able to argue or debate and have discussions without escalating or getting mad at each other without trying to get revenge or play games uh, again, communication. I guess alcohol all fun, um, fall under communication. Then there, you know, like I said, there's communication. There's the healthy mindset. I always say the the foundation of a healthy relationship is two healthy people. That's very hard to find because you have people who have different attachment types. You might have a woman who's anxious attached or attachment who needs the validation, and you might have a guy who's avoidant because he doesn't want to get hurt. Or you might have a woman who who's who's avoidant and you might have a guy who's anxious and he needs that validation uh, because he's so insecure because of what happened and a woman doesn't give it to him, then he freaks the F out. I mean, there's so many variables nowadays. That's very, very hard to find a decent person, which is why I believe the best thing you can do is work on yourself because it is a two-part process. It's you and it's him. If you work on yourself and you become the best version you can, and you, and I, and I know women hate hearing this because it's so cliche, and you work on your looks, and you work on yourself, and you work on your, your wants, desires, and where you want to be in life, and helping others, and giving, and caring, and taking care of your body, and, and getting in shape, and working on the, you know your sex positions. I don't care. I don't care what you're doing. Uh, giving back to less fortunate. Uh, changing your style. Moving up in your career. Uh, because being the best mother you could be, if you just do that and you work on your assets, you're not going to have any liabilities. And there's no reason for him to. Now, if he leaves you after that, then okay, you know what? Then I would just say he wasn't the guy. He didn't want the same thing, yada, yada, yada. But if you could work on your part and you could find a person who works on their parts, a healthy ego man who you know who has a healthy mindset works on himself is very caring loving a very good communicator which is i think that's probably top three most important things if you can find and do that and, and and then when you come together then you work on the rest right because i i, I don't believe you can you can become a full 
full-fledged person without the love of another, right? That's just me. Uh, a good example of that would be a mother. Uh, uh, say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I guess I was going to say single mother, but I will say mother too. But we'll say single mother. Like, I dated single moms before, and they have a different kind of love. They have a different kind of patience after they have a kid. You know, I mean, you just don't love a kid the same way you love you love just some guy you met on Tinder. Obviously, you don't have the same patience as a non mother as you do after you have that kid and you're going on no sleep and your brain's mush and you're still able to put a smile on your face and give that kid what they want because that's what's you know the the the, the amount of sacrifice a single mother makes like that shit's very very important and you just don't see that. And certain individuals, they can be very sac- sacrificial. Uh, this makes them sound like a lamb, but they can be very selfless. They can, <laughs> lamb, man. <laughs> they can be, uh, yeah, they can be selfless. They can be caring. They can be giving. They can, they can be patient, very patient, very giving, very loving, but not the same as a single mom. I've never. I'm telling you, when you're a mom, you have a love and a patience that is rival to none you know i mean it it second to, it, it's just too powerful and i think you need to have the same thing or same mindset in a relationship you could do 80 you could do well i guess as a, you know when you're alone you work on yourself 100 percent. and then when you you know you've got to find a guy who could work on himself 100 percent. but then when you come come together that's a whole new that's a whole new story that's a whole new chapter now you got to build you know because when you're alone you can't build you know, communication skills. When you're alone, you can't build patience. I mean, you could. You could be patient when you're trying. You're, you're waiting for a, you know the internet, the internet to work, or your slow browser. I mean, yeah, or you know, waiting on somebody like the waiter or your food. Yeah, you. But that's I mean, that's limited patience. But when you're arguing with somebody that you truly love, and you want to make this relationship work, and you're not willing to give up on it because you believe it's worth the set. You know, I mean, that's. A huge sacrifice. That is a huge amount of patience that goes into that, and that brings you to the, the next level. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that, you know. So I mean, that's important. To, that's important to find. But with that being said, ladies, we're on what 27 minutes now. I'm going to cut it short here. I should make the podcast longer. But what the hell am I going to talk about when I'm alone, right? So with that being said, ladies, I love you. Take care. Uh, subscribe if you have it, and peace.